to my Interpol 2021 online poster. Um, this is just a short video to give you an introduction to the poster. Um, if you want more information, please come and um, talk to me in the session or drop me an email. Um, so the poster really is about 3D adaptive modelling of transient multiphase flow experiments using the Moose framework. Um, really, I have to thank my co-authors, especially Chris Green, um, who has done a lot of the work in porous flow and Moose um, development, um, really helped with this project. Um, and really, the idea behind the project was to build um, a sort of open source simulation environment to simulate transient multiphase flow problems um, in heterogeneous media. Um, and at CSIRO in particular, um, Chris Green and Andy Wilkins have been doing a lot of work with the Moose um, simulation environment, um, as well as developing the Porous Flow module as part of that. And Moose is developed um, primarily by researchers at Idaho National Lab. And it's a very general simulation environment. Um, and it's built using modern software engineering practices um, with community-driven updates and version control in GitHub. Um, it's, it has a high-level interface to LibMesh and Petsy, so it can be parallelized, and it has various meshing options that can be um, adaptive to your flow, um, and various um, discretization methods, such as finite element, both with Galerkin, discontinuous and continuous, as well as finite volume. Um, now, what we wanted to do with Finch, really, was to build an app as part of Moose, um, and built on the porous flow module in particular, but to simulate transient flow problems in really heterogeneous media. Um, and we really wanted to do this with a finite volume approach um, because of having discontinuous saturations and things in the domain, as well as um, with adaptive meshing, which is really key here, especially when we have um, fingering and very dynamic, um, unstable flow situations. Now, the reason we did this, um, and we didn't really just want to add another software, um, another bit of simulation for porous media flow into the, the sort of research community, um, what we felt this was adding really was that even though other things such as um, PFlowTran, Dumux, um, Open Porous Media, um, MRST, if you can get MATLAB, what these don't have really is a really modern software engineering um, backbone to them um, with community driven updates and version control in GitHub to make it all really transparent. And the other aspect is very modular coupling between physics. So if I want to have geomechanics and um, multi-phase flow as well as heat transfer, I can couple those um, fully implicitly um, using this Moose environment very easily. And you can build apps on top of this, as we've done with Finch here, that essentially um, takes the, the physics we want um, and uses this Moose framework as a backbone to implement it. Um, and this is, this is really quite useful for a research um, community. You can really quickly add in different physics um, and couple them um, really strongly and um, with quite um, good accuracy. So this Finch module then, um, one of the really nice features is it has automatic differentiation. So we don't have to form sort of really un unwieldy Jacobians. Um, we have high order time stepping. Um, the 3D meshes we generate can have, it can be sort of hexahedral, tetrahedral. We can have various refinement indicators to actually adapt those mesh with various um, physical attributes. Um, and there are also various um, equation of state implementations in there for nitrogen, methane, CO2, brine, various fluid systems. So what this poster is really taking you through then is the development of this um, Finch software. Um, we've got two verification methods here um, that are sort of numerical verifications. These are done primarily to show that we're capturing heterogeneous aspects. So the first verification is a capillary diffusion problem with different entry pressures and permeabilities in the different sides of the domain. Um, and as the, as the fluids equilibrate because of the capillary pressure gradient over that interface, we can compare our solution to um, an analytical solution. 
The second verification is a, a sort of Buckley Leverett moving front problem where we have the shock wave and a refraction wave. Um, and this is really to test the transient adaptiveness of that mesh that we're implementing. Um, and really to show how we can capture really sharp fronts really nicely with an adaptive mesh that uses orders of magnitude fewer cells than uniform mesh but is able to retain the same accuracy. Um, so these two verifications really um, allow us to analytically show how um, Finch performs and that it's giving us the uh, numerically we're solving the equations um, that, we want to, that we want to solve. The next step then is a validation which is really are we, is, our, is our simulation actually modelling um, the physical world really. Um, these are just both sort of numerical exercises. And the first validation is looking at a nitrogen injection vertically into a one meter long Bentheimer core. And you can see the saturation here after five and a half hours and this complex interface that's forming, that's sort of this um, sort of bifurcated um, front. Um, and so we simulated this in 3D. You can click this link here for a 3D video of it. And these are just 2D slices to show um, how we do. And really you can see how nice the um, mesh is adapting around the interface. Um, if you zoom in on the poster you can see these various um, really refined cells that are adapting around as this interface moves. Um, and we're able to capture this front quite well um, in, our, in our simulation. The second validation is the same core, but now we've rotated it slightly in a new experiment and it's tilted by seven degrees. Um, we, the first part of this experiment, we inject a little slug of nitrogen into the right-hand side and the left-hand side, side um, and let it equilibrate for four days. Um, and you can see the simulation comparison here. Then in the second part, we inject nitrogen at varying flow rates from 10 to 30 milliliters a minute over um, about an hour and a half. Um, and we have this final experimental um, image here of the nitrogen saturation. And you can see how the simulation um, follows a very similar pathway to the experiment, even if at late time we do slightly over invade the system, um, we, but that's likely a characterization issue. But what, what I wanted to show here really is that we can capture the equilibration um, phase and the, the distribution of the fluids as well as the evolution and the gravity tongue that follows um, as we move in time. Um, so these validations are really to show how we can capture these quite complex um, bifurcating fronts that are mainly driven here by the heterogeneity in um, porosity and, and entry pressure and permeability um, and how we can adapt um, the interface around these. And th these are using sort of uh, 60,000 cells adapted around these interfaces at late time in 3D because it's really, it really gets quite ramified. Um, so that's a, a brief um, overview of the poster. Please come and talk to me, ask any questions you want, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.